So uh, like I said, Friday, we were able to get the firmware, get it decompressed. We actually got a test system up and running, familiarized ourselves with the system a little bit. And we just started going through the patch. And one of the first things we noticed was in their um, API server, they had a, a diff where they started including some extra HTTP headers when they proxied a connection to one of their backend servers. And uh, there were, I believe, three headers. There was a HTTP forwarded header, uh, a VDOM header, and a, a cert header. And so we took those strings and we put them into our decompiled version of the firmware to kind of start to pinpoint an area for us to look because this firmware is, is gigantic. There's tons of files to look at. And so having that patch is really critical to being able to quickly reverse engineer what they did to find the original exploit. So after we put those strings into our firmware, we, we found some interesting parts centered around authorization and authentication for these devices. Um, and what we found was when you set a specific forwarded header, the system, uh, for lack of a better term, thought that you were on the inside. So a lot of these systems, they'll have kind of two methods of entry. One is through the front door, where if you come in, you have to provide some credentials. They don't really trust you. You have to provide a cookie or some kind of session ID in order to be allowed to make requests. And the other side is kind of through the back door where it looks like you are part of the system itself. So if you want to ask for a, a particular resource, if you look like you're part of the system, they're not going to scrutinize you too much. They're, they'll just let you do whatever you want to do. So really the nature of this exploit was we were able to manipulate some of those HTTP headers to trick, um, trick the system into thinking that we were coming in through the back door when we were really coming in through the front. 